In this video you'll learn how we have created the robot tank for our 3D scene. While creating the pre-visualization we already have created the first version of our robot. But we have decided to reject this version of the robot and start completely from scratch. The first thing we did we searched in the internet for quad mac to find some nice reference images. So basically we picked images and ideas we personal liked and also we kept in mind that the robot has to fit in our 3D scene. In our story this should be an old vehicle so we decided that it somehow should look like an old tank from World War II. Also important for us was that the robot has a shape that one can recognize. That means the robot should not look like a typical modern sci-fi robot. Yeah, and if we combine an old tank with robot legs, that looks interesting. Also, in general, this is a very interesting method to create vehicles or technology for sci-fi worlds. Just combine something you know from our world with something that maybe does not really exist. In our case, it's a tank from World War II combined with robot legs. The first thing we thought about was how the legs of the robot can work. It's very interesting to just start to paint some robot legs just from your imagination without using any reference material. And then you realize that's not very easy because it's somehow important to know how such a robot leg work. It's just like you want to draw a Reno from your imagination and then if you take a look at a reference image you will realize something is wrong on your painting somehow. And that's the reason why it's important to search for references, especially for technical stuff. In our case we did not do any sketches, we just built up a rough 3D model of a leg in Blender to check how this robot leg could work. Basically this is sketching in 3D, so we had a rough idea for the leg and this we used as foundation. To create this 3D sketch we first created the rough skeleton, just to check if the movement of the leg works right and is also some kind of realistic. It's important that the leg can move forth and back and also up and down. And the axis here in the middle is to cushion the steps of the robot if the leg moves and hit the ground. Certainly the robot moves on uneven surface, so the foot has to be flexible and in this case we added a spherical joint and also some toes. Then we thought about where we can add some armor on the leg, but in a way that the leg still can move freely. With this armor the leg gets an individual look. In our case the robot should have a very round shape and not too sharp edges because we don't want it to look too much futuristic and also it should not look threatening. Maybe a little bit like steampunk. Then we've concentrated on adding the details. Details are very important so the object in general looks not boring and so it's much more interesting for the viewer to watch the robot. And although the whole robot looks way more realistic with all these tiny details. And although the details contribute to the story of the robot. Very important if you add the details is that they have a real meaning. That means all the details you add there should have more or less a real function for the robot. And also use shapes one can recognize. So maybe some shapes we know from our daily life. To save some time you can create a little variation of details and then create more variation using these already created details. In case of the robot legs we have created five important details. We have a hydraulic cylinder, one rotation axis, a cable, a handle and a bolt. These details we just duplicated, used it several times on the robot and placed it in a good looking way. Basically one can say that the hydraulic cylinders are the muscles of the leg and are responsible for the main movement. The rotation axis we use for the joints of the leg. The cables are like veins. 
By the way, for the cable we just use simple bezier curves. The handles we placed on the armor and also the bolts we placed all over the armor on the edges. Here's a simple trick how to position all the bolts on the surface very easily. In the header of the 3D view just enable snapping and then choose the face for the snap element. And also that the bolts are all going correctly we also enable these two buttons here. And now you can move the bolts on the surface and you can see it also has always the right rotation. And in this case the origin of the object will be used as a sticking point. And if you for example edit the bolt in edit mode you can adjust this point. And so you can adjust how high or low the bolts should be if you move it away or closer to the origin. Also we have added a ventilation shaft and separated the armor into different parts. Some more details here and there adds more realism to the robot leg. Yeah, and so it looks in general a little bit more interesting. Yeah, and so the first version of the robot leg was created. And here in our case the first version of this robot leg was completely created without any concept art. But we have used reference images from the internet to check if we find details we can use for our robot leg. Yeah, and so the first version of this robot leg was created basically as research for us how this all could work. And just after that we started to build up our real robot and for that we've created a concept art in Krita. And then step by step the robot was created and here we use the method from rough to fine. That means we started with very rough shapes and then step by step we added more and more details. For creating our objects we always try to work non-destructive. That means that we always have the change to adjust or fix things easily. And for that we try to use as many modifiers as possible because the modifiers you always can turn off and so the mesh won't get destroyed. For example here we use the mirror modifier so we basically just have to create one side and the other side will be created automatically. Also we try to keep the amount of polygons in the edit mode as less as possible because the more polygons you have the harder the modeling part will be. And because of that we add the subsurf modifier and so the whole surface gets subdivided and also smoothed. But the basic mesh still keeps in the rough shape. With a solidify modifier we added thickness to our object. And using the edge split modifier we sharpened some of the edges. A simple method to let non-organic objects look more realistic you can add a bevel to the edges using the bevel modifier. And so you get some additional reflections on the edges and so the object looks way more realistic. The creation of this robot tank lasted several days and if we had at some point no idea we always searched for more interesting references in the internet and so we get additional ideas we have added to the robot. And as you can see here we also adjusted the legs. Another very important part so that your object looks believable and interesting is the work on the shapes of the object. In our case we started with simple basic shapes we put together but the viewer really fast can recognize those shapes and so the image really fast gets boring because the viewer has revealed the secret of the shape basically. Way more interesting the shape gets when you merge those different shapes in an interesting way together. Also very important is that on the one hand the shape does not look too round and smooth and on the other hand not too edgy and angular. But if you combine hard edges with smooth shapes the whole thing looks interesting and believable. For the armor of the legs for example we modeled the basic shape with a few polygons. Then we added a subsurf modifier and with loop cuts we defined some sharp edges so the whole thing looks very interesting. 
Yeah, and here you can see with all these hard edges and also the round shapes, the whole shape of the robot looks very interesting. Another very important thing to make an object believable are the right proportions of the different objects in relation to each other. And if you change the proportion, the object gets another character. And also it can look very exaggerated or cartoony or just stupid somehow. Yeah, after we have spent some time on our robot, we finally get to the point where everything looks fine for us. Sometimes you have to say, okay, we have to stop here, because otherwise you get lost in the details. Before we can use this model in our final scene, we have to clean up the object and adjust it. And that's very important. First of all, we concentrate on the legs. To do so, we delete three of them, clean one up and then use this cleaned up model and replace the other three legs. And that saves a lot of time. At this stage, we apply some modifiers, for example, the mirror modifier, and then we join different parts of the robot leg together using Ctrl J. In the end, we have joined as much as possible together so that we have as less objects as possible and we have joined everything in a way that we still can move the important parts of the leg. And also important is that you place the origins of the different objects in the right position so that you can rotate the different parts of the leg in a correct way. The same thing we do for the body part and also for the cannon head above. We apply the mirror modifier and join everything that belongs together and then we parent the different things together and set the origin points to the right position. After that, check the origins and the rotation if everything works right. Another important thing is to apply the scale and the rotation so that all the modifiers and later the textures will be correctly displayed on the surface. And this you can do using Ctrl A. More about applying scale and rotation you will learn in another video. In the end we add an empty object and parent all the parts of the robot to this empty object simply that we can use only one object to move the whole robot. And this is our finished and cleaned up robot. One important thing when you model an object using a subsurf modifier, never apply the subsurf modifier if you don't need it. Because then you always can decrease the resolution of this modifier. And so if you have some heavy objects in your scene, you are still able to work smoothly if you decrease the resolution. Yeah, how we did the shading for this robot, we show you in another video. Yeah, now we have a very nicely built up robot and now we have to destroy it. Then we import this robot into our previous scene and place it in the right position according to the ground and then piece by piece we destroy the robot. Starting with the legs, then in sculpt mode or in edit mode with proportional editing we add some dents to the surface. Then we add some holes using the knife tool in edit mode to the surface. Also in edit mode we separate some of the objects and move it away from the original position. Then we add some whipped out cables. Yeah, and that's it for the destruction we do by hand. The rest of the destroyed look the material will add later. But as already said this we'll show you in another video. Yeah and voila! We are done with our destroyed robot. Don't forget to save.